So there are a couple of fundamental factors when it comes to recording your own audio or doing a Zoom meeting or anything that's going to be on video, okay? And we're gonna talk about lighting, we're gonna talk about sound, and we're gonna talk about set. And set is like what's around me right now, okay? We could use green screen behind me, we could use a backdrop, uh, you see behind me, I have a conversation piece of my guitar back here. Usually you want to keep it kind of clean. You know, you want to have like the, the plants back there. You don't want a lot of clutter. You want to make a nice even setting, okay? You want to speak into whatever microphone you use. If you don't have a microphone, make sure you speak up. Otherwise, I'm going to show you a couple of options for audio. Um, you want to speak up. You want to look at the camera. So what most people forget and it's not that this is huge, but just remember when you're being recorded and you want to do a presentation that I'm looking at the camera right there. That is the camera right there. Most people look at the screen here um, of themselves or other people talking. So I'm looking, most people you see when you see videos, you'll see them saying, yeah, how you doing, Bob? You know, they're talking down here. So when you want to talk to somebody, it's hard to do, but look at the camera. Look at wherever your camera lens is. Try to look at your camera and it's confident. It's looking at you in the camera. It's looking you in the eye. Pretend that you're talking to that person right there in the eye. And, uh, you know, try not to lose eye contact too much. Now, another style of interview, Gordon Ramsay does this a lot too, is that they'll pretend that the interviewer is sort of off camera. So you'll pick a spot on your screen, like right here. And, and I'll be talking over there saying, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? And you maintain that spot. That's like a camera angle thing. My recommendation is keep it simple. Just try your best to look at the camera when you're doing talking, or if you're focusing on something. So if you're focusing on talking about this pen, for example, I will look at the pen and I will talk about the pen, look at the camera, okay? We're gonna talk about lighting too, how much that affects video. We're gonna talk about sound. So let's get started. This is an example of a bad Zoom call and what we wanna to try to avoid. Really bad lighting, really bad positioning, uh, really bad scenery and really bad sound. So here are some great tips to make a Zoom meeting or video recording even better. Now here's an example of good lighting, good positioning or set or scenery, and reasonable audio. I'm going to work on the audio in a second, but I just want to show you an example of good lighting. Here's an example of decent lighting, and all I'm doing is using a Google page, a white background Google page on my computer. So the entire screen is made up in the background of a Google screen. Wait, now look what happens when I remove the Google screen from my computer. Things get really dark because I don't have anything in my, on my computer that's emanating light. It's all dark in the backdrop. So let me put the white Google screen behind this Zoom frame here, and there's the lighting again. So that's a really inexpensive, super simple way of adding light to make sure that your computer is giving off light, okay? Let's talk about sound for a second. Right now you're hearing me through my computer's audio, okay? I have a microphone that's built into this computer, and that's what you're hearing it through. And it's okay quality, if that's the best you have, that's okay. So I'll talk about that later, how to maximize that. But it's very inexpensive um, to get a microphone like this. This is a Samson microphone. It's very, it's one of the cheapest microphones out there that has really good quality. And yes, it has professional corrector, uh, connector ends and things like this, but it, based on uh, USB, I'm going to plug this in. Okay, now that this is plugged in, I can make it. Okay, you're gonna see a difference here. Now I'm gonna click on my audio settings in Zoom and I'm going to make sure, oh, I am using the Samson microphone. So you can probably hear a difference right now on how good that sounds using a Samson microphone. Now you can also buy one of these booms, uh, these cheap booms here that holds the microphone so that you don't have to, it's like a hand screen book. So basically you swivel the arm, you see these in podcasts, and it just sits here for you. So you can sit here and tuck away and use your hands or whatever. You can use that. Now, sometimes if you don't want it in focus or blocking your view, which is never a good thing, um, you can actually put it down below you like this, and it still sounds good. So having an external microphone is definitely beneficial. Another great thing you can do for your videos is think about lighting. Lighting is really important. Lighting is critical to good video, okay? The reason you see me now, again, is because of my cheap 
uh, cheap trick here of having a Google screen behind right here. This is the light, literally a white computer screen, Google screen, home screen uh, behind here makes the light. But imagine without that. OK, so now what do you do? How do you do this? Well, what you can do is let me put this back. You can get yourself one of these really inexpensive USB lights. This is one way to do it. OK, this USB light here has a little plastic thingamajiggy that basically there's a, a magnetic ball that clips on here and it swivels and all you do is you put it up on your computer send this to the edge of my computer and I swivel it down and it can angle down so let me show you what it looks like if I decide to use this it has a little control mechanism right here that you can click and you can change the color and tones turn it on and off so let me turn it on See, there's the light and then you can change colors so this is how you can turn it up or down there's a button for that see it's brighter so now watch what happens when we use this and see what happens here when we have lighting we don't want to use the light like this <laughs> we don't want it here oh, it looks spooky we don't want it up here we want it in front of us so I'm gonna put this on top of my computer this okay see and this does the same thing. Um, so now let me turn it up. I'm going to turn the brightness up. See, that's too bright. Plus it blinds you, right? So you just need a little bit of light. And you can play around with the colors. Another great way to light your screen is my favorite way, which is buying one of these USB halo lights or ring lights. Okay. And all it is is a ring with lights that go all around it, LED lights. Usually comes with a stand. You can unscrew this too. This unscrews and you can put it on a tripod and it has mounting mechanisms that you can put on your computer. And it too, USB and it has a little controller so you can change the color, you can change the brightness. And what you do is you turn that on the same way. Boop. Okay, let me get rid of the Google screen and I'll show you what this halo light does. What I like about the halo light, so now let me turn it around. Boop. And you can see it lights up the face. What's nice about this particular light is the halo light is it lights all around your face and it makes these little twinkles in your eyes you know ding you know so you can also change the hue too because some people like certain certain types of light so let me change that yeah to a white light and you can do sort of a, a brownish light like that you you know it depends on the color you want the style you want but see what it does changing the light then you can change the brightness and again, this isn't bad. The price the price of this halo light is actually reasonable. I think this was $25, you know, and it just creates real nice level lighting. It works really well with a camera too. If you're walking around with a camera, you can use it with your iPhone and other things. There's actually a little mount here that you can actually add for your iPhone if you want to. So this is the halo light, one of my favorite ways of doing lighting. If you can afford it and you have the patience to work with a halo light, it can work really, really well. <laughs> really it can work really really well regarding audio one of my favorite audio mechanisms actually i have two favorites but one simple one is the famous lapel mic here okay it's a small little microphone it's important to buy a good one because the good ones have gold endings or copper endings that don't make that staticky crispy noise but most of them are pretty good and what i usually do is i hook this up i hook the uh, the lapel mic into my iphone okay you get a an adapter if you need one or whatever and it improves the sound you can actually hide it you can actually stick put it through your clothing and have it stick up under your lapel thus lapel microphone and it hides so i'll show you what that what that does on a phone more so than on a computer i mean i do use it on a computer but i'll show you what it's like on the phone so here's my favorite audio device for Zoom calls or for doing videos. And it's the Rode, R-O-D-E, Rode Wireless Go 2 audio system. And it's pretty cool. It has a, a transmitter like this, this right here, this little box here, comes with this little fuzzy attachment which stops all those weird noises, you know what I mean? But feedback and crispy noises, there's a whole nother video I do on that stuff there. But you attach that and it comes with a little clip you see the clip and you clip it on your uh, your coat pocket or whatever and you could walk around 
and do your videoing and it takes really good, good audio. Um, it's amazing, amazing. And it transmits to another one that's plugged into my device or you could plug it into your phone too, your iPhone, your tablet or your laptop or your computer or whatever. So it's the Rode Wireless Go 2 microphone and it makes really, really good quality. It really, really does. It's absolutely one of my favorites. If you can afford the time, uh, the budget, I think it's kind of a pricey uh, piece of equipment. I can't remember what it costs, but somewhere in the neighborhood of $200 or so. Um, and if you have the technical ability to figure out which audio settings you have on Zoom or whatever you use, um, but if you have that ability, I highly recommend this. So keep in mind that Zoom and Google Meet and many others allow you to change your backdrop. So if you have a real busy, crazy backdrop and you don't like it or you have family things going on or things that you don't want people seeing, you just go to your video settings like in Zoom. I'm going to show you here. Have you seen this before where they have a blur setting? So if I click on the blur, click it's going to blur my backdrop so it basically cuts me out now I did other videos on green screening green screening is awesome because I can actually it, it because of the RGB values and the lighting and all this other stuff it actually makes a nice clean cut around you and you can actually add some clean footage in the background and make it look almost real but this is a good close second you know if you just want to blur your backdrop and make people focus on you I don't like doing it. It's not natural. You know, I just like having like this, like a regular conversation where you see the backdrop or whatever, but that's fine. We can click this. Um, also, you can add backdrops like this, you know, just to have fun and make it interesting. You can actually add scenery, uh, video scenery too, like this. Pretend that I'm on a beach. I think these are kind of cheesy and distracting. You know, it makes like a ragged cutout and stuff. Um, but they can be fun, you know, and it depends on the backdrop too. You know, sometimes it's nice to just have something. Like if I'm doing a nice calm meditation video and I'm talking to you, I could do this and say, ah, oh, picture the backdrop and all this stuff, right? So keep that in mind that you can play with your backdrops if you want to in Zoom as an option. Another great idea for audio is using your iPhone. Most smartphones come with this audio recording app. So it's like so easy to use. And all you have to do is start up your audio app and then click record here. And there it goes, it's already recording. And you just let this uh, record away. Just let it sit here in front of you recording your conversation. And then you have a backup audio in case this one fails or you don't like this quality, you have a backup on your phone. So this is a great idea. Sometimes for professional podcasts, what I do is I literally use this and I record it in a walk-in closet or a closet because the clothing dampens the sound. You don't have that echo, 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 echo. So think about that. Use your phone as a backup for audio. 